what we're going to be talking about today is the energy stored within a capacitor. Let's get started. Okay guys, now let's first of all get started by looking at a graph of the potential difference on the y-axis and the amount of charge stored on the x-axis. If we were to calculate the area underneath that graph, uh, well this will just be the area of this triangle just over here, so it would just be this area over here. Now the area is going to be given by half the base multiplied by the height, so the area will be equal to half the base, so a half times Q multiplied by V. In this case, the product of charge multiplied by energy per charge actually gives us energy. So the area underneath a V against Q graph will actually give us the energy stored within the capacitor. So W is going to equal half Q times V. Notice that this equation only applies for capacitors. So it's very, very specific. This is given in your formula sheet as well. So I've taken this straight off the uh, OCR Physics A formula sheet and uh, you can see the W is equal to a half QV. Now because Q is equal to CV, we can actually expand this even further. So because Q is equal to CV. Rather than Q, what I'm going to write is just CV. Uh, what I'm going to get is that the energy is also equal to a half CV. Oops, let's change that. CV times V, which is equal to a half CV squared. And this is the other equation, which is also given, which is just this one over here. And finally, because V is given by Q over C, we can expand this equation out further or simplify it even further to reach the most fundamental state of this equation. And what we're going to get is a half C and rather than V squared, I'm going to write Q squared divided by C squared like that. Uh, there's no need for those brackets actually, so let's just leave it as a half Q squared divided by C because those guys are going to cancel out. And this is the final equation which uh, or the middle equation which uh, you guys are given in your formula sheet. So we have three equations depending on the situation, depending on what we're given, that we can apply to find the energy stored within a capacitor. Let's apply this to a couple of problems now. guys, so let's have a look at our first past paper question. The graph below shows the variation of potential difference V with charge Q of a capacitor. Which role is correct for the gradient of the graph and the area underneath the graph? And this will be a perfect opportunity for you guys to pause this video and attempt this question. Okay, now let's have a look at the solution. So first of all, we have a V against Q graph. So we know that, oop, let's change back from the highlighter to the pen. So Q is equal to CV. So this is the main equation that we are dealing with. As always, what I'm going to do is a rearrange for whatever is on the Y axis. So V is going to equal to Q over C. And I'm just going to rewrite this as follow V is going to be 1 over C times Q and I'm just going to add a plus 0. I'm going to say that this is equal to Y equals MX plus C and uh, we can see that if V is on the Y axis, if Q is on the X axis, then the gradient will be 1 over the capacitance. So uh, because our gradient M will have to equal 1 over C and the graph should be a straight line through the origin. So that narrows down the answers from A to B. Uh, in this case, the correct answer has got to be A. And uh, the reason for that is because the area of the graph is the energy. However, remember, energy and work done 
Well, they're actually exactly the same. In fact, this is why the equation is given the symbol W as well. So the uh, work done or the, um, the energy stored is equal to the area underneath the graph. So the correct answer is A. Okay guys, now let's go through a written question as well. So this is question 1 from June 2010. Part A says to define capacitance. Now remember Q is equal to CV, which means that the capacitance C is equal to Q over V. A formula is always a good way of uh, just starting to think about those definitions because capacitance is Q over V. Uh, that means that it's the amount of charge stored per unit potential difference. Okay, let's have a go through part B. Figure 1.1 shows a circuit consisting of a resistor and a capacitor of capacitance 4.5 microfarads. Close the switch S1 and then you open up S2. The potential difference across the capacitor is 6.3 volts. Calculate the charge stored by the capacitor. Now, because we know that Q is equal to CV, so we know that Q is equal to CV, and in this case, we know the capacitance, which is 4.5 microfarads. Just a little quick check of the units. There's a little catch there. They want us to provide the units in microcoulombs, so we don't actually need to convert the microfarads. And our voltage is 6.3 volts. So it's going to be just 4.5 multiplied by 6.3 volts. And if we put that into a scientific calculator, we're going to get 28.35, working up to two significant figures in this case. So this will be 28 microcoulombs. Okay, now let's calculate the energy stored by the capacitor. If we look into the formula sheet, I'll provide a little a um, little snapshot of the formula sheet. We know that we have three formulas for calculating the energy which has been stored on the capacitor. In this case, we know the voltage and we know the capacitance. So the formula that we're going to use is this one over here because it has both the capacitance and the voltage. Okay, so let's write that formula down. So our energy is going to equal a half V squared multiplied by C. Now our voltage is 6.3 volts. So let's square that. Don't forget the square guys. It's very, very easy just to, um, just to forget a square here or there in an exam question and that can cost you a mark. Multiply by the capacitance which is 4.5 microfarads. Now I'm just going to glance at the units and they want them in joules now. So not microjoules, so we need to convert the microfarads to farads. So that's going to equal uh, 4.5 times 10 to the power of minus 6. And if we input that into a scientific calculator, what we're going to get up to two significant figures is 8.9 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 5 joules of energy stored within this capacitor. Okay, folks, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video, and if there are any questions about energy or capacitors, please feel free to drop a comment down below, and please consider subscribing.